Hello, hello, hello. Today we are talking about your prepper pantry, how to stockpile your prepper pantry, and we're answering your questions. The number one question we get is how do I stockpile my pantry on a budget, on a dime, however you want to say it. Um, so a prepper pantry does not have to be complicated. It just needs to be started. People think that you have to have this bunker full of food, and that is not the case. Just get started. Now, a lot of people think that this isn't necessary, but let me tell you, here in Wyoming, the highways were closed 62 days this year. I just watched another YouTuber. They had three mudslides that locked them on their mountains. They can't get out. We had the same thing happen in Colorado. We had the same thing happen in Idaho, mudslides, and we couldn't get out. This is why you want to have your pep prepper pantry. It's not about the zombie apocalypse. So to get started, just start with buying one or two extra things. At least get an extra week in your pantry. Then get an extra two weeks. And it all it amounts to is when you buy a can of peaches, buy an extra one for your prepper stockpile. Buy a can of green beans, get one or two for your stockpile. We recommend every time you go to the grocery store, spend $5 to get an extra one. Most people go to the grocery store once a week. Every person can afford $20 extra a month to start stockpiling. They really can. So get started with that. Even mom, we did a tour of her stockpile. You just kept collecting a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had to restock when we moved here. And it's already up to where I needed it to be. And it's been two years. But, oh, about a year ago, I had it pretty much completed. You well, know. It's actually, it's only been 18 months. Well, that's true. So, yeah, yeah for you. Yeah, I guess it's true. So, so and, and a I did year, it, I did, you got it done. Yeah, I did it real slowly. Every time I went to the store, I just got like a sack full extra of stuff. And that adds up faster than you think. Yeah. Shirley says it must've been Trent and Alley. Yeah. It was Trent and Alley that I just saw. And Shirley says in Montana, lots of erosion. Yeah. Now people out West are probably more prepared than people out East on the East coast. I'll just right. be perfectly frank. We have to be prepared out here back East. People are under this illusion that the stores are always going to have food. Mm -hmm. Somebody's or, always going to take care of them. you can always get to the store. Yeah. I mean, even if you get sick, uh, you know, like everybody was sick the past couple of years and stuff, you don't feel like dragging yourself to the store. You re really shouldn't be going to the store. You know, if you even have a bad cold or the flu or something. And so many people just keep a few days worth of food in their house. I'm really shocked about how many people that do. And if you're sick... You get laid off from work, you know, you've got that extra food to back you up. So now, there's lots. No, go ahead. Sorry. No, that's all. So if you want to take a thousand dollars and stockpile, go for it. I mean, that's fine, yeah. but don't think that that's how you build your stockpile. It's Almost every single person I know spends $5 extra every time they go to the grocery store. And that's how they slowly build their stockpile. I'm not saying you can't go spend a thousand dollars if you want to, but most people don't have that kind of money later. Well, it's just a matter of adjusting to your situation, how much money you have, how many people you have in the family, you know, and what you think you can do. Physically, I couldn't go. I would maybe have the money to go and buy a thousand dollars worth, but physically bringing a thousand dollars worth of food home of and work. trying to stack it in the where I need to put it. That's a lot of work. That's why I do just a sack full at a time because, and I think that's why so many people don't want to do it because it, they're overwhelmed mm -hmm. with the thought of the work that it's going to be besides some money. By doing it one sack full at a time or $5 at a time is so much easier. Yeah. So give us a thumbs up guys. Please subscribe if you haven't and put your questions in comments in the uh, comment section and Mike will pull them. Our Mother's Day sale right now is 40% off. This should be in your prepper pantry. Dining on a Dime Volume 1, Dining on a Dime Volume 2, and our Gluten-Free Dairy-Free Edition. This will help you make everything you need. Your taco seasoning, your bread, your tortillas, your biscuits, your um, syrup, anything 
homemade, your cakes, everything homemade is in these two books. This and is the one to start with. We have one. things like ketchup and how to make Dijon mustard, Mayonnaise. all the dressings and soda crackers and graham yeah. crackers. And like Tara said, tortilla shells you can make. Mm -hmm. So we have a ton of stuff that if you can't get things eventually, you can probably make them, uh, you know, mm -hmm. yourself. Yep. So just get started. $5 a week is the first tip. The next one is, and I think I saw this in the questions, uh, Montana girl. This was actually the next one. How much is enough? I would say get up to a year if you can. Yeah. <clears throat> At least. And I know this seems overwhelming, but just, my goodness, just get started. You would not believe the people who just won't get started. And... I tell the story about my neighbor every time we talk about this. I love you, Katie. But <laughs> we were having our floods and they were warning us. And she said, well, I don't have anything in the house. Well, I did. I would have taken care of her because I love Katie. But <laughs> Katie decided to go to the grocery store to get milk and bread. Coming home, she almost didn't make it. Her car barely made it through the floodwaters on the way back. And after that... Katie has kept a stockpile. <laughs> Why? Because she didn't want to have to get stuck if that ever happened again. Yeah. And in our town, when the floods happened, we couldn't get out for several days. There were towns that it was eight to 10 months before people could get around unless they wanted to drive eight hours out of their way to come down off the mountain to get food. And so just get started and then enough would be one year. I know Mormon friends have three years worth of food and that's fine. If you want to, if you have the room and you want to do that, you can, but I mean, at least get one week, then get two weeks, then get three weeks, then get a month, then get three months, then get six months because the, the goal is to just get started so that someone else doesn't have to take care of you. One thing I do too with my food, because I'm by myself, it's hard to keep keep rotating it. And so a year's worth, I keep a year's worth of regular like fruit and vegetables and canned meats and that I have at least a year's worth, worth of all those canned items. But then I have as a three or four of the big freeze dried powdered stuff like uh, cauliflower and dried chicken that those last for a really long time. So this way I have a year's worth of regular food. And then if things get even worse, I've got at least, oh, I, for a single person, I probably have like three months worth in the dry, freeze dry stuff that I can get. So I have it layered, you know, so that you can do, uh, use at least the year's worth. And then you've got emergency backup on top of that with the dry freeze dried stuff. Sue says, I've seen the craziness out there when that thing going around hit, even a little storm hits lessons learned a year and a half plus in my pantry. I add something every day. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what's funny is actually Mike and I were just talking about this yesterday. I think yesterday we need to go in and start restocking because I, when we moved, well, of course, when that thing going around hit, I got an extra stock, but then when we moved, I had to replenish everything because I gave away probably three quarters to 80% of my stockpile when we moved. And um, so we had to replenish it when we got here. And I was like, oh my goodness, I haven't made a huge grocery run except for our case lot sale was last time, except for my stock. So we've been actually going through the stuff and I'm like, man, I got to get on it again. So um, it's something that you're going to always be doing, always be doing just kind of like cooking. You're always <laughs> cooking. That's why we're having our Mother's Day sale to teach you how to cook. Because if you learn how to cook and use these foods, when those emergency situations happen, you're not going to be stuck in the middle with nothing. All right, go ahead and send me questions, Mike, if you want. Um, the next one is, what do you do about bugs and mice? Here in Wyoming, and when I lived in Colorado, 
we don't really have a bug problem and I didn't really have a mouse problem. Kansas is another story. <laughs> now, there are some places that have more bugs than other places. So when I lived in Kansas, I had to be much more careful by freezing my flowers, freezing my rice, all of that kind of stuff, making sure that I didn't have uh, or that everything was sealed in um, metal containers and stuff like that because of the bugs and the mice. The mice will pretty much eat through anything. Yeah, except metal. You have to do the metal. Make sure you have mouse traps, even if they're the old fashioned kind and you don't like looking at a dead mouse. Well, I'm sorry. You're going to have to buck up and do it. And I would definitely have 20 or 30 mouse traps so that if you don't want to release the mouse from its bondage into the trash can <laughs> after it's dead, then <laughs> you could just get a fresh mouse trap. But you need to have mouse traps. You need to put down tiatomaceous earth to make sure that when the bugs walk across it, they're getting killed. You need to make sure that you freeze your flour before you put it in your food storage. You need to make sure that you put your rice and your grains and all of those in really, really sturdy plastic or metal containers if possible. And I use the popcorn, the metal popcorn containers that popcorn comes in at Christmas time. You can get them for almost nothing at thrift stores and garage sales. Um, another thing too is check any fresh fruits and vegetables you can bring into the house. These aren't for long-term storage usually, but they, if you don't check your potatoes and stuff in Kansas, we had to check them because they could bring in roaches and then you would contaminate. If you don't have anything, you could contaminate, you know, your supply. So be careful. You don't contaminate your supply when you bring the fresh fruits and vegetables in like the potatoes and things like that. Yeah. Wanda is still having a mouse issue. Oh, Wanda. Oh, no. Wanda, I would come there with my hammer if I could. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Wanda. That's awful. Oh, poor Wanda. Oh. oh, my goodness. All right. Mary says, good evening, my beautiful lady friends. Oh, oh thanks, wow. Mary. Hello. <laughs> Lynn says, so glad you guys are back. Hope you had a great trip. We miss you when you're gone. You always brighten our homes and give us so much helpful information. Yeah, our trip was... Our trip was, we'll talk about it a little bit later. Yeah, our trip was, <laughs> it was a variety in our trip. <laughs> Purple Light says, hello, my son bought me both volume one and volume two cookbooks for Mother's Day. Yay. So here's the good news, guys. We have extended our sale until Friday. Because we were gone and we weren't able to do videos, we decided to go ahead and extend our sale until Friday. And then you can get the 40% off Mother's Day right now. Um, we just didn't have as many um, days this year. So we decided to go ahead and extend it for you, even though Mother's Day is on Sunday, right? <clears throat> My dearest, <laughs> what happened Sunday? Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> Sunday is give mom all the kisses she wants day. <laughs> Now, would mom want to kiss that? <laughs> yes, mom would. So, there's, mom oh, would. so somebody was uh, playing practical jokes with dad's computer. <laughs> <laughs> I have a similar one on my phone. <laughs> I have a similar one on my phone. <laughs> we never know what we're going to find on our computers and phones, do we, dear? Nope. Um, you guys, this phones and computers are open to Maine. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Bonnie says, layoffs started at my company today. If I hit the list, I have about a month in my pantry. Good. Very That's good. That's at least something. Yeah. That is at least something to get you started. You yeah. guys, you this is not about the zombies. <laughs> People think we're nuts. If, if a zombie zombies attack, I don't think there'd be any hope for anybody. So <laughs> It's about, in Wyoming, our roads were closed for 62 days this winter. It's about... South Carolina, North Carolina, Florida being hit with hurricanes. It's about Kansas, tornadoes, wiping out an entire town with the only grocery store. And then they had to go 90 miles to get groceries if they could get through the debris. <laughs> it's about California having earthquakes and the 
the roads being destroyed. It's about sickness. It is about layoffs. It is about any number of things that could happen. And so this isn't out of fear. It's an offensive move instead of a defensive move. Very good, yeah. You don't need food for zombies, you need ammo. Mike said you don't need food for zombies you need ammo <laughs> well we got both so we're good <laughs> we're, we're prepared for everything huh yeah actually we need to go back to the range because i would didn't realize i was such a good shot i was actually hitting the target <laughs> and i was actually hitting in close to the middle of the target <laughs> I was pretty proud of myself, if I do say so myself, since I haven't shot for 40 years. So if you see Tar with a gun, you better run, guys. Yeah, because you know I can hit you. Because so, you're bigger than the target is. Um, and um, so that's, you know, guys, it's just about getting ready for anything that can happen in life. And then when that thing going around hits, and it's not that big of a thing, but they decide that they just want to not let a good crisis go to waste anyway. So they force everyone to stay home with no job. Can't go to the store, nothing. You are prepared. Guess who had toilet paper? Oh, yeah. When people were standing in line for hours and hours for toilet paper. Yeah. I Well, I didn't get anything extra when that thing happened because I was already stocked and ready yeah. to go. So. Well, I was already stocked, but I will tell you, when that thing going around hit, as the day they closed schools, we had the money and savings, and I did go and got, I did go and get two baskets full of supplies because at the time we had six people in our family, and we didn't know how long this was going to last. So... Um, I did go buy extra because, money, yeah. because we had been planning on moving and I was letting my, my pantry get, get down. I actually, mm -hmm. I had a lot, but I didn't have, I probably had three months worth for six people. I didn't have a lot at that point. So mm -hmm. anyway, Esther says, I live alone, but keep my extra freezer with bags of ice in case of power outage. outage. Very good. You can also take and rinse out of milk jugs and fill those up if Soda you need jugs. to. Yeah. Uh, Jen says, happy early Mother's Day. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Oh, and by the way, Rachel. <gasps> oh, my, oh, my goodness. goodness. This is so funny. Well, first of all, this is the cutest. Look at that. Isn't that cute? Wrapping paper. paper. Oops. Is that not the. Oh, I can't do that. Is that not the cutest wrapping paper ever? Look what Rachel sent me. <laughs> So, Rachel, I will put my hair pins in here now <laughs> just to carry on the Tell tradition. Tell them what that's for because some may have not seen the video. Well, if they didn't see the video, oh, they better they go watch out. the video. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> that's a memory for Tara. So, we were at the flea market in, what, two or three videos ago? And uh, I found one of these. And I was like, oh, should I get that? It's a memory. Mom's <laughs> like, you don't need a memory. So growing up, mom used to keep her hot roller pins in here. Whenever we needed hot roller pins, we got mm -hmm. it out of the secret <laughs> box. <laughs> it's a moment. I know. Look at that. 45 cents right there. Do you know I never took those? I never ate one. <laughs> Well, how did we get a dad? Surprise? He ate them like crazy. My dad did. Oh, <laughs> I my never ate goodness. one. That's hilarious. <laughs> See? Uh, I'll, I'll use it for Mike's brilliant idea. <laughs> that would be cute. Okay. Mm. Um. So thank you, Rachel. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Nellie, it has often said that if there's ever an emergency where New York City, Manhattan can't get food in, they only have enough to feed people for 24 hours. I would believe it. I would too. That's what happened in Colorado when the floods hit in eight hours. The grocery store was literally cleaned out. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was nothing left on the shelf. And then they had to drive eight hours out of their way if they wanted to go get groceries. And thankfully, it was in September and the mountain passes hadn't closed yet. But it was eight months before the road was cleared and um really well and then one way they were able to put in a temporary road and so um
they were able to get through, but a little bit, but it was very limited traffic, that kind of thing. It wasn't anything exciting. So, um, but we tend to get very complacent and think it's not going to happen to me or it's not going to happen to us, you know, or whatever. But now too, it's even more important because, you know, like FEMA and different places, government things would come in right away and help out. We don't have that comfort quite as much because they can't do as much. And if something's a big area, you know, it may be a lot of yeah. a week, two weeks before they even start coming in for things and yeah. stuff. So, well, the government, oh, so the government, Homeland Security website tells you that they say yeah. we're not going to rescue you right away. Make sure you're ready. Oh, they do. Yeah. Mike just said the, the government website said that they're not going to rescue yeah. you, you know, right don't away. Don't plan on it. And if the government's telling you don't plan on them rescuing you, then you need to you really need to start be listening. thinking, yeah, something's going on. <laughs> so, you know, it's even more, we're just so used to having somebody else that could come in and help us. And that's not always possible. Melinda says those cat litter containers are perfect to stockpile yeah. rice and pasta. Yes, I love it. We love those. I even move them with me from Kansas. I can't say I miss the cats. I do miss <laughs> the cat litter containers. <laughs> I do. Mm-hmm. Cheryl, still trying to figure out the water situation. So I don't know what your situation is, but just do a DIY water filter like our video. Mike, can you go find that video and put it in there? Um, it's $40. Well, it might be a little bit more now. I think the filters went up. So I think it's like $60 now to make one. But just whenever you have empty soda bottles, juice bottles, tea bottles, whatever bottles, I even use my bubble bath bottles um, to store water. And then um, just store as many bottles as you can and then get your filter. And then you can not have to worry about water. And the way I do that is I use the juice or the pop bottles and that I rinse those out with just soapy water and, uh, or, and a little I Clorox if you want. I soap. I just rinse it out with water. Well, I just, I don't know how much the flavor is going to stay in them. So True. I just rinse them out when I'm doing my dishes. But the thing is I use those like the juice and the, the pop bottles for the water I'm going to drink. Mm -hmm. Then I take, if I have like my uh, laundry detergent, liquid laundry detergent, those bottles I will rinse out really good. And I fill those up and I can use those for washing. You know, if they might have a soapy taste, I drink it, it, but if it has a soapy taste and I figure those I could use for washing and, you know, um, different things, cleaning the sink or whatever I have to do washing dishes, uh, flushing the toilet, those could, those bottles of stuff can be used for that. Oh. Amanda says her son with autism loves watching you. Hello, oh, Amanda's son. Hi. <laughs> I hope you're having a good day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sharon, we're expected to have golf ball size health. Oh, oh, don't get me started. Uh, I, Mike ever so generously bought me some early Mother's Day plants because they were almost out. So I was like, Oh, these are the ones I really want. Can you buy them for me now instead of Mother's Day? He's like, yes, my love. <laughs> but I like the way you said that. They just went to a marriage conference at church. So now to, it's just Trying to love. save our marriage, but it's not working very well. As, as uh, my head was about to explode off my shoulders at the marriage conference. <laughs> you can, you just, poor Mike. It was so funny. He's never going to take me to another conference again. <laughs> hey. Dear or anywhere or anywhere, <laughs> I kept my mouth shut. Didn't I? Tell everyone, tell everyone how I kept my mouth shut. She was struggling. She was squeezing was my smoke. hand like when she was in labor. <laughs> like, but I kept my mouth hold shut. It, hold it. Hold it. It's like when you put a dog treat on your dog's nose. You're like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I was rather proud of myself for keeping my mouth shut. Now, I'm going to go and tell 300,000 people about it, but... And about 15 of them watched the show. But we'll talk about that later. Okay. What? I said, howdy faster. Howdy, howdy faster. (laughs) Oh, poor, our poor pastor. No, it was a good conference. If the pastor has to leave, it was a good conference. I'll just tell you later. It was good. It was funny. Were you... You weren't there at the conference with us. Me? You, yes. Well, I know Mike told me the story of you oh. keeping quiet. That's what oh, said. that was, yeah, what, was that's what was funny. Being able to keep my mouth yeah, shut. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> have I ever kept my mouth shut like that? I don't oh, that know. would have been creepy taking your mother-in-law to the marriage conference with you. That would have been beyond. Then they would say, 
you're our, you're our, we test see case. your problem <laughs> you're our test right case. away. Diana says, hello, you are live and it's my birthday. Oh, oh happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> I'm so glad. Kimberly, I have not forgot your soap. <laughs> Poor Kimberly. I'm so sorry. I'm going to send it tomorrow. I will send you a link when I send it. Or, uh, <laughs> Uh, tracking number. I rearranged my food supply and figured out that I need more beans and rice. I am really worried about the American dollar falling. And so beans and rice it is added to all the other food. I have stocked cabinets. I don't have a walk-in pantry and I have a couple of months of freeze dried food. Very good. Yeah. That's Kimberly has been job. watching us for several years and she has listened. She has. <laughs> a lot of you guys have been listening. It's so great. But here's something that people don't think of. So when we moved, I spent a thousand dollars redoing my stockpile. I happen to have the money. It was after the big money crunch after we moved. We always have a money crunch when we move. And it was after that. So we had the money and all that. But I got a $250 return on my investment for that $1,000. That's a, what, 25% return on my money. You can't put that in the stock market and make that kind of return. Why? Because that's how much inflation went up on those particular groceries from when I bought them after we moved to now. Mm -hmm. So I actually had a really good investment for my money for that. So, uh, oh, nope, got Sue's already. Mom of one, I have been actively pre prepping for over a decade. That is wonderful. Very good. Mm -hmm. Wanda says, organize as you go. That's a mistake I made. I didn't. Yes. I was going to talk about that. My next batch, uh, Two. I was just today before we were doing the show, I was thinking about telling you guys that I'm glad you brought it up, Wanda, because I think people get overwhelmed because you're trying to do too much of everything at one time. And I was thinking about keeping the pantry organized and everybody thinks that's so hard to do. But every time I bring, you know, a sack full of canned goods home or whatever it is from the store, I put those things away. Yep. But as I put them away, I straightened up that little section of the stuff that I put it in. And so each time you straighten up that little bit of area and keep it nice and neat. And that makes it like she said, so much easier than trying to do go, leave it for like a year using it, letting the kids and the husband get in there and make messes and everything. And then go in at the end of the year and try to get it organized. Okay. If we weren't in the studio, I'd have Mike go take a picture of my stock power room right now. I did not teach her. She did not listen to a word. I had the case lot sell and I had the boys just dump it all in there. I'm, I'm a failure as a mother. It's pretty bad. <laughs> but you know, I do that even with the laundry when I don't ever have to pull everything out of all my drawers and anything like that to straighten them up. If I'm putting my socks away each week, I straighten that little section and put everything neatly in there. Mm -hmm. So do that with everything, whether it's your clothes that you're hanging up or the towels you're putting away. It doesn't take but 15 seconds to straighten a little section up that you're putting away and do that with your pantry. Mm -hmm. All right. The next comment is Shannon. Jolene, we started with rice. Yes. yes. Just start with bait and oh my goodness. Buy food you will eat. Don't go stock beans if you don't eat beans. We eat beans. Mom does not eat beans. It, it does not make sense for mom to stock beans. Mike and I, we like beans. Well, I don't know if likes, if likes a pretty strong word, but we'll <laughs> eat beans. And so we're okay with that. And what I started with was beans and rice because they're complete protein started there with some spices, and then I just kept adding my way up. If you don't eat beans, make it rice and tuna. But rice, rice is a really good thing to start out you with because it just lasts have rice. for a long time, and yeah, and it's pretty healthy for you. So There's people in the world, now, I know they're probably not the most nutritionally sound, but there are people who subsist on rice, and that's all they eat, or oatmeal, that's all they eat for their meal every day. It will keep you going for a while, at least sustaining life. And another thing too is I, what I do is I have stockpiled on my vitamins. And so if you got like the rice, that'll keep your stomachs full, you know, and hat, and it's good for you. But then if you can supplement it with vitamins, that can keep you going just a little bit longer. Yeah. So 
Shan says, my stockpile's gone down since my uh, when my son came to live with us for a few months, so now I'm going to start back up slowly. There's nine living all together oh for now. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, stockpiling for nine, that's, that's, that's a bit. Yeah, yeah. that's going to be fun. <laughs> Julie, I play heck with a husband that moves in stashes, doesn't remember where he put stuff. It's madness. I have no <laughs> idea what I actually have. Do you, do you sympathize? <laughs> At least Mike's not that bad. <laughs> he hides my gifts, but he doesn't go hide in my stockpile, thankfully. Uh, What's with that? <laughs> why? Okay, Julie, if you're still on here, comment. Why does he do that? That doesn't even make sense. It sounds like he moves maybe other things, too. Well, it's kind of like when you go away, Mike will clean for you, and he doesn't know where always to put the stuff, so he just puts them in different well, places. Well, yeah, but I mean, it sounds like he just moves her stockpile. So, so tell us, Julie, what is his problem? <laughs> Melinda, it feels great going to the store and only need five items. Yes. Yes. Jennifer, I've been cooking through and not replacing ready to move, but I'm rethinking that. You know, that that's a really that's a hard, hard one. one. Yeah, we struggled with that ourselves. I, probably what I would do is just keep an eye on it. And like the day that thing going around was a. I mean, that thing going around had been around for four weeks before they really started shutting down the country. Okay, maybe six weeks. Let's see. Yeah, six weeks. Well, I've been watching and watching it. But as soon as they shut down the schools, I was like, oh, that's not good. So I knew right then, okay, I'm just going to go stock up extra. Our stockpile is down. If I lose $1,000 because we can't move it, I would rather lose that thousand dollars that I spent on the food and not need it than to need it and not have it. I had friends who had UTI issues and had to have toilet paper, couldn't use, they had to have sterile toilet paper. And they were waiting in line for hours and hours just to buy toilet paper. I mean, it was really sad. And, and yes, I did offer. They didn't want to take it, but yes, I did offer. And um, so I would rather be safe than sorry. The good old adage, you'd rather be safe than sorry. Okay, yeah, I lose some money, but that's better than us losing our lives because we needed those things and we couldn't have them. Yeah, and what she said at first, be alert. Pay attention to what's happening you know, we don't say watch the news necessarily, but you can tell what's going yeah. on. For example, they were announcing that the flooding may affect the water plant. Tar was, I think, the only one in her neighborhood that had new and was on the alert and filled up the bathtubs right away, started filling up her containers. She went to all of her neighbors and said, start filling your bathtubs. The water's going to go down because yeah. they alerted everybody, but nobody was doing anything. They just thought, well, you know, it's just a little warning. Uh, a lot of people with the tornadoes, um, uh, they, they don't know. A watch is, you know, you get a little bit prepared. When we have a warning or a watch or a warning, we would get our shoes on and get ready, you know, to go down. And so you you stay a little bit ahead of this stuff and kind of partially prepare if you can yep. and do as much. But be alert to what's happening in your area. Well, and like during the floods, my ever loving husband, who's the best husband in the whole wide world. Oh, dear. Took no, my kids. Like. So at, that was at that time, my kids were in school uh, 30 miles away. And so he drove them back and back and forth. And then he would go work at the library, not for the library. He would go work at the library and, while the kids were at school and then drive them home. Well, when the floods were happening, I was like, we don't watch the news. But I was like, oh, my goodness, this is a lot of rain. And then I was looking out the window and I'm like oh my goodness, this is really a lot of rain. <laughs> and then I was sitting there like, okay, this is really not good. So I turned on the news and they said, we have a flood watch. You know, everyone, it's a flood watch. So I called Mike and I said, Mike, take the, yes, you, I'm talking about you. <laughs> I said, get the kids out of school and come home. This was like at 10 o'clock or something. I said, just take the kids out of school and come home. He's like, oh, no, it's just a flood watch. We'll be okay. I said, Mike, no, no, we'll be okay. So then another 30 minutes or an hour goes by. And I call him. I said, Mike, take the kids out and bring them home. 
oh no, it's, it's okay. They'll be fine. So this is like noon. And I was like, Mike, call the kids. They're saying that the water plants are going to be going and Estes Park is already gone. I don't think this is good. Well, let me see. I'll go look. And in between that time, then it went from a watch to a warning. And I called them and I said, you guys get home now. And I am not exaggerating. Five minutes after they crossed the bridge of the big Thompson River, they closed it because it had flooded. Five, Five minutes. <laughs> yeah. You. So, so Mike's <laughs> version of the story is. But I was listening to the radio while she was calling me to see, and they said, oh, there's some, you might watch out for urban and small stream flooding. And I was thinking, well, the river is 50 feet above, or the bridge is 50 feet above the river. So if it's small stream flooding, we should be good to go. And then after Tara said that, then I called the, I called the highway department and the state patrol, and I asked them, hey, what's this looking like? And they said, we have no idea. So, so finally, I went ahead and took them out. But at first, because they were saying small stream, flooding, which usually means, you know, stuff that you just don't want to drive your car through. Um, I thought it was that big It just does go to show, though, that you should underestimate those Your wife? Things. Your wife? <laughs> I thought you were going to say you should listen to your wife, huh? I have to be careful on that one. <laughs> oh. All right, guys, our cookbooks are 40% off right now for our Mother's Day sale. This is volume one. Start here. If you want to save money and eat better, this is the place to start. Volume two right here is just the additional recipes we couldn't fit in here. Totally different recipes than our Dining on a Dime Gluten-Free Dairy-Free Edition. If you're gluten-free, dairy-free like me, that's the book for you. The recipes are tested and they are delicious. And then, guys, this is not on sale, but we do have our planners. We picked up the rest of them when we were in Colorado. Undated planners are in stock right now, so you don't lose any pages. They can be used right now and get yourself organized. And we have had so many people just loving our planners. They are so <laughs> excited. And Angie says, just received the cookbooks and love it. The best part is how the ingredients listed are what the majority of us have in our pantry. Exactly. There are no shiitake mushrooms in these recipes. And that's why they have basic ingredients. So if you do have an emergency or something, you can make up almost anything. You'll have on hand most anything yeah. you can need to make up. Michelle says, I live in Kansas and I use glass jars. Yep. Yes. Very Those good. are good too. Elizabeth, mm -hmm. everyone loves the farmhouse bread. I can't remember. I think that's volume. I think we that was one of the new recipes we added in volume one when we updated it, I think. And yes, that farmhouse bread. One of our viewers, Roxy, I don't think she's uh, with us anymore, but she sent me that bread like, oh my goodness, it's been like 20 years now ago, and it is so delicious. So thank you, Roxy, for that, mm -hmm. if you happen to be watching. Mm -hmm. Just Vicky, I had a little bug incident in my cupboard last summer, and thanks to you, I put diatomaceous earth in there after cleaning. Yep, also using Very plastics good. for my grains, yep. Jay Moore says, some dogs are good mousers. I know. Yeah, I had one. one. Yeah. <laughs> Janet. Uh, okay, Janet, I will get about to our trip here in just a moment. <laughs> Chrissy, I have volume one and two plus the balloon free. I have the set now. Well, thank you. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad. Linda, how many preservative tabs do you put in the five gallon tape containers of water? I don't put any. You can put a drop or two of bleach in those if you want, or probably even like a half a teaspoon of bleach in the water and then just let it, uh, when you're going to use it, just let it, um, leave the lid open and let it evaporate for a little bit if you want. But what I do is every six months, my kids hate me, but <laughs> we make a fireman's line and we take all of the jugs and I water all my plants in the spring, refill them, take them back downstairs. And then I do it in April and I do it in um, October. That's and how I do what it. What I do with mine is I have a lot of little bottles that um, I collect from different places and I use it 
keep uh, like a half a dozen in with, with my ironing. A lot of people don't iron anymore, but I will use it for that. And then just my house plants, I will just mm-hmm. rotate it through watering my house plants throughout the winter and that type of thing. Yep. And then in the summer, my outdoor pant- plants, I water them. So yep. I just keep rotating it like I do my food. Debbie says, I have mouse traps, and then my friend introduced me to peppermint oil and cotton balls. Mm-hmm. Wanda, you might try peppermint oil and cotton balls. Everybody keeps swearing up and down that works. I have never tried it. But my goodness, as much trouble as you're having, I you're, I think you said they were in your attic. What I would do is get like 200 cotton balls, soak them in peppermint oil, and just hurl them all in your <laughs> attic. <laughs> then when you die, people are going to say, what, what was wrong world? with this woman? <laughs> well, Mike said put a python loose up there. But, well, actually... I hate to say it, but that might be a solution. Oh, yeah, right. Takes you a long time without eating and if they eat all the mice, they'll they'll be good to go. I don't know. Desperate Uh, times call for desperate mm -hmm. measure. Mm -hmm. Crazy says, you ladies make my day. She loves her video. Thank you. Even if we're all in peppermint balls. balls. (laughs) Uh, Myla says, leaving on vacay in two days. We were staying in a condo and had my cookbooks packed (laughs) Wow. Oh, that's a new one. That's, that's dedication. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Uh, no, we I have all my cookbooks a lot of places, but not yeah. for camping. When we say people love our cookbooks. We wow. didn't realize quite how much. <laughs> Jay Moore says plastic traps won't really hurt dog or cats. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cheryl just ordered cookbooks one and two. Thank you. Oh, yeah, thanks. Jolene, thank you for answering my email about the food expiration, but then I felt like an idiot when I saw there was a page about food expiring in volume one. Yes. <laughs> That's fine. That's okay. Elizabeth, make sure and have bottled water. Yes. Mm-hmm. Jim, the background reminds me of Honey, I Blew Up the Kids. Oh, is that? Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, I went to the store during that time. It was surreal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jay Moore, I was somewhat stocked, as was my norm. Now I'm well stocked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And part of why I started prepping was I just don't like to shop. I don't want to have to go to the grocery store more than once a month. So, Marie, last week we had 24 inches of snow and no power for three days. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mary, during that thing when the toilet paper was gone, one of the pizza shops gave away cellophane wrapped toilet paper with every pizza order. Oh my, oh my goodness, goodness, that's, that's funny. Um, Did you see the rest of the comment? I was just going to say, when she talked about losing the power um, for three days, when you do stockpile, be sure to try to get use small cans. I always get smaller cans because if, unless you have a big family, of course, you know, and would eat a whole can of something at one setting uh, because if you don't have refrigeration in the summer or something like that and you have these huge cans a lot of people think you have to stockpile these big humongous gallon sized cans uh, for their stockpile but uh, you won't have any place to put the leftovers if you have no power you know so yep. think of that you might want to just make sure you do smaller cans and don't freak out like let's say you have some leftover meat that meat can go four to six hours just fine. Yeah. Without people refrigeration. Used to, people used to leave it several days. And so don't just go throwing on a it out. And they would take yeah. pack the, the lunch in the morning with nothing to keep it cold. And they go till noon, you know, and eat it and that yeah. type of thing. So thank you, Debbie, for the super chat. Oh, thank you. That. Um, do you recommend a generator? So if you can afford it, that's fine. We personally don't have one. I would recommend a wood stove before Mm -hmm. a generator, but not everybody's able to do that. So it's just kind of up to you. Just because I think you need gasoline or something and to run that. And if you can't get the pumps are locked down, there's no way you can get, you know, gasoline. Wanda was, did you call Harl everything that you wanted to bring back? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, we did good. Pretty good. Including boxes of books. Yeah. We need the books. Terry, what do we spray on the outside of the house for what? Bugs? I just use regular bug killer if that's what you're talking about. Um, Wendy, I'm pretty well prepared and I'm working on a bug out plan. Yep. Wanda, there was a train derailment here a couple days ago. You know, we might have had to bug out, so you never know. Mm -hmm. Jay Moore, my secret was office supply for TP during the thing. Oh, that was smart. The office supply oh, yeah. store. Very good. Yeah, that was good. Very smart. Speaking about bugging out now, I do keep about, oh, three, four days worth of food in the trunk of my car. 
because you never know. They always say that when emergencies happen, most of the people aren't at home, just like Mike and the kids weren't at home during the flood. So I keep three to four days worth of food and stuff in the trunk of my car in case you have to jump in the car and take off and leave. You'll have it there. Also, if you've got a, a, some, a place at your office where you can uh, keep a small little something in a, in a desk drawer or something a day or two worth of food, because sometimes like with the earthquake, some people can get trapped or things like that. And, you know, you maybe can have a little bit. Lynn says, I've been away from home since April 29th with no pantry. Just had to get out from a fire. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, there yeah, go. there's That's an perfect ex example. Yeah, example. You know, I keep my trunk yeah. full. Oh, she keeps her trunk full. <laughs> Well, only in the winter. In the summer, I don't keep it quite as full. Because going from our house to um, your <laughs> oh, house. that's right. I'm not traveling you anymore. Need 15 Actually, years worth of supplies. With the snow we got this year, I would have to wait for days for Mike to shovel out to get to me. Oh, you not. <laughs> you live on the main road. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Sue, so, walking to my prepper pantry is so much easier than fighting traffic. It's crowded. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. very true. Kimberly, I have volume one, the 21st, 20th of the anniversary edition. So this is the edition after the 20th anniversary edition. Mm -hmm. And every ebook, I love having the ebooks because I can always refer to them if I have a need for a recipe. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, we don't mention them all the time, but we've got a whole thing, bunch of ebooks that all these different things we're talking about, every subject under the sun just about, we've got an ebook for, and they've got even equally, if not better tips, you know, yeah. than what we have time to do on here. Kimberly, I'm going to start stocking up on over-the-counter med medications because most of them are from Asia. Yeah. Yes. So actually, I've been doing that for a couple of years now. And I found out Dollar Tree has Allegra for cheaper than Costco. Costco is the places that I found it the cheapest. I found it for 30 cents a pill at Allegra. So guess what's getting cleared off the shelf in my town tomorrow? Yeah. Yep. And that's what I was saying with vitamins, any type of meds, you've got to start trying to stockpile yeah. them. Cheryl, anyone know of a good quiet generation reader? I don't know. You'll have to ask our viewers because I don't know. Yeah. Havana says when the flood came in July last year here in Kentucky, we were trapped from Thursday till Tuesday. I had food but needed drinking water. We were sure glad to see the National Guard delivering water. Yeah, mm. get your water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tammy, is Mike's great idea a shelf? Sort of. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you sort of. Actually, Mike's brilliant idea will probably be revealed before the kitchen. Um, mm -hmm. Wanda, Mike's brilliant idea is an auto chef like the Jetsons. Oh, oh that would be yeah. great. <laughs> Mom of one, the idea for using laundry detergent bottles for washing and toilet flushing is one I had not thought of. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Julie, love loves your background, my dearest. <laughs> Send me the next batch. Okay, so while he's sending me the next batch of questions, so how did our trip go? So to say it was stressful is an understatement. But it was fun because I had fun with Goalie and for an hour and Kimmy <laughs> for two hours. <laughs> we had, we had fun for two hours. We found Kimmy mm -hmm. from she's in her apron roaming around Colorado. No, what's hilarious is the day before we left. I think I think it was the day before we left or two days before we left. Kimmy Kimmy and I text and talk all the time and. She said, yeah, I'm going to such and so place in Colorado. And I said, what? They said, no way. I said, I'm going to be there. And so they had something kind of planned, but unplanned. They had to do while they were down there. And I said, well, I'll stay another night. If you're going to be down there, let me know. So sure enough, she got to stay. So we got to go out to lunch, no dinner, dinner. with um, Kimmy. So that was, and we got to see Goalie, our printers who do our planners here they are wonderful so we got to see them and um it was fun that and, was the fun part you know it's fun meeting our viewers it really is i mean we were chattering like old friends we just couldn't yes. stop talking you know couldn't get enough talking and it was really a lot of fun seeing them so that two hours was great mm -hmm. the rest of it not so great <laughs> well grandma's birthday so, was fun yeah Grandma's birthday was fun. We... Oh, I forgot about that part of Grandma's birthday. Oh, my goodness. I forgot. We had a variety so, of interesting things happening to us. The whole trip, it was just like an up and down, continual 
<laughs> so first of all, we go to Texas Round Roadhouse in Longmont, Colorado, and <laughs> for Grandma's birthday. And um, first of all, it's really super noisy. Well, Grandma can't hear very well. So I first of all asked for a table not in the bar. <laughs> They wouldn't give it to us. We were about this far from the bar of seats. Yeah. Oh, I know. We my my we shoulder. Reached, we could My reached shoulder was touched. like this yeah. to the to the bar chair next to me. <laughs> well, then the platform they had the, the table on. The then we had to hoist Grandma up. <laughs> they had the, the they had the table up on a. I mean, it must have been a twelve inches high platform. <laughs> Grandma's like four foot eight or something she's super short so we had to hoist grandma up onto the table so then we get this guy oh my goodness he was wearing a pearl necklace and pearl earrings hello lovelies oh i'm celebrating a birthday today oh lovelies if if it wasn't grandma's birthday and we didn't have to hoist grandma down hoist her down after we hoisted her back in the car I would have said, are you going to be acting like this the entire time? Because if you are, I'm leaving. Well, when, it, I did not go to have a nice birthday dinner with my 95-year-old nice birthday grandmother to have this man prancing around acting like a fool. He he really, he was pretty, he was it was pretty fool. rough. Yeah, he, <gasps> he was like a dramatic actress that was trying to prove himself do an audition for something or another you know it what was really with these people? and we couldn't hardly talk be or hear he I, just kept interrupting yeah, he just, we couldn't talk with each other because he just kept hollering basically at us non-stop next so. time that happens though that's what i'm saying because it is ridiculous it it's was absolutely pretty bad. ridiculous and i couldn't believe it after our show the day before <laughs> Talking about all that nonsense, and we get stuck with it for an hour <laughs> eating Grandma's birthday. It was so well, mad. you know, it was hard enough to talk. My mom can't hear, and then we're right there with all the noise from the bar and the music, and <sighs> and um, yeah, and then for him to keep popping over and yelling really loud. I mean, he didn't just talk; he was moving his arms and shooting them up in the air and crouching down and doing this whole dance type thing every for every time he came to pour water in our glasses <laughs> well and then i'm sorry but colorado is from oh, satan now it's oh my god i was shocked we drove over the border and you talk about god removing his hand from no something. offense to you guys that still live in colorado but it we was love kind you, of, but <laughs> i always loved colorado and it was so beautiful but wyoming's all green and nice and grassy and i'm not kidding we hit the border yeah it was and right it is at the like border. a dead desert the even the like evergreens awful. and everything like that was everything just was just dying dead. it wasn't from winter death it was just something it was, was just dying and it was dirty there was trash all over. Did you guys see my post about Joanne Fabrics? Did you know what? on Facebook? That video didn't totally mm. show. It didn't. It, it didn't. She didn't, didn't the, get the full no, effect. The of full it. effect. Yeah. I didn't realize my camera was out of focus. I thought it was in focus. I was so shocked because I've seen bad bathrooms before, but this one, I mean, like where the toilet paper was, there was stuff dripping down on it and things like that, and. It was just really kind of dirty and dead when you go in the stores. There was no, um, you know, they used to keep the outsides of the stores, the sidewalks clean, the grass and stuff nice and neat and mowed and things like that. It wasn't like that this time. There were so many stores. The shopping centers just look really kind of skanky and run down. It was strange. It was yeah. really strange. And then now they charge you for bags. Oh, we got it. <laughs> I'm not paying 10 cents for a grocery sack. You should have sack. seen the looks on our faces the first time they want to charge us well, with bags. And then. So I'll, save your plastic bags, you guys, because your state is, might be yeah, next. This Keep is another saving prepping them. They're yeah. going to make it a national law. I know they yeah, are. Yeah, so it's save ridiculous. your plastic bags. Grocery then bags. <laughs> I went to the grocery store. Oh, my goodness. So I couldn't figure out why my card number wasn't working. This is traumatized you. I forgot. I wish I was recording. I should have been recording. I made a scene in the grocery store. <laughs> Can you? Everybody you was looking at me. The scene. <laughs> Actually, she really doesn't. That's what's so funny. <laughs> I know from how we talk on here, but in the store, she's very, very nice to people. Usually, she talks very politely, nice, and not this day. 
<laughs> so my card number wasn't working. Well, I didn't realize till later I was using the wrong card number. I thought it, I thought it was Mike's cell phone and it was our old home phone number. So anyway, despite that, I told the cashier, I said, it's not taking off my discount. I said, so can you give me something to get the discount? She said, well, you're going to have to get a card. I said, well, I don't live here anymore, so I don't want a card, but you know, can you just scan it for me so I can get the sale price? Oh no, you have to sign up for a card. And she goes over and she picks up a card and she scans it. And then she lays it down on the self checkout thing. So I was like, Oh, okay. So I scan all my stuff and I put it in the bag and then, <laughs> then I start walking out she's like, ma'am, ma'am, you forgot your card. I said, I don't want my card. She says, ma'am, you have to take your card. I said, I don't want my card. And by this time, I'm fairly far away from the cash registers and she's chasing after me. And she said, ma'am, you have to have your card. I said, I don't want my card, throw it away. <laughs> I was yelling across the store at this woman over a stupid discount card <laughs> that I don't even want. <laughs> I was just like, oh my goodness, the aura there was just getting to me. <laughs> it what it did feel weird, didn't it? And then my eggs were cold at breakfast and they had no tea <laughs> oh, and no orange juice. Oh, that was really bad. I know. We were so looking forward to this wonderful <laughs> breakfast. And we get down there and it's just like and we weren't <sighs> that late getting down either, really. No, it was huh. like 7 30. Yeah, we were pretty right. early. <laughs> so then, oh my goodness. Oh dear. So that didn't go very well. <laughs> but when I came home, my kitchen was 95% done. And so, Jack had T boiling. Jack had for you. tea. Boy, I'm glad good thing he did. <laughs> Jack had tea boiling for me. The boys and Mike had cleaned up as much as they could with our three model. And gotten a bunch of little piddly stuff done on the remodel. So my remodel is 95% done. And they're coming tomorrow to finish one section. We have a section by the kitchen sink that needs epoxy. So they're going to pour that tomorrow. And then we have to wait for the big window. And then we'll be done. So technically by early next week, I could actually start using my kitchen. Now it's probably going to take me longer than that. Um, just to get it cleaned and organized, I mean, is really dirty. <laughs> it's really bad. I started she today. Yeah, I started today on the laundry room and I only got the top layer of stuff and little paint, paint touch-ups. And that took me like two hours to just get all of that stuff done. I didn't even, I wasn't even planning on doing much. I was just kind of working my way through a little bit because I thought, well, I can block off the laundry room from the kitchen, but and get that done but um it's gonna take probably a full two to th probably two to three weeks before i can get it up and going again so but it actually looks like a kitchen it looks cute and it looks really it's good really cute yeah it looks really really good and the Can't ice wait maker for you guys to see it yeah pistol came and fixed the ice maker and so tomorrow's video should have that whole that whole uh, saga on there um, with the refrigerator, Home Depot and Whirlpool. You should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, and I don't know who it was. It was Christy or somebody. I can't remember. Start with a K. I'm sorry. But somebody told me they worked at Home Depot and to um, email a corporate. I did. And you know what they said? Okay. <laughs> That's basically what they said. Oh my word. Let me see if I can actually find, I don't, I think I deleted the email because I was so mad. They, yeah, I deleted the email. They were basically like nothing. Oh, here it, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Oh, nope. That's not it. Never mind. Yeah. I mean, it was basically, we don't care. That's pretty much what they said. I was just sitting there thinking, uh, I'm trying to keep my calm, but I'm not doing a very good job. So anyway, all right. So that's where we are with the kitchen remodel. And that's where we happened with our trips. We made it home safe and sound and hit a few thrift stores. Not a lot, just a couple. And did Joanne's Fabrics in a couple of places, but that was about it. Mm -hmm. So Julie, he is worried about the weight on the floor. 
her husband moving the stuff around. Oh, for the pantry. I truly have no idea where most of my stuff is. He is old. I have no idea, folks. He's blessed I haven't heard him. My stuff is here, there, <laughs> That's and everywhere. Cute. That's so cute. <laughs> uh, yeah, I could see it if it was upstairs and there was a lot of weight. He's worrying about the weight on the floor. So <laughs> you got to love him anyway. You got more patience than I do. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. I think his body might be hiding the next thing we know. Uh, that's funny. Uh, Libba mm. says, we are so glad we're back. We missed you. Can you share why you left your stockpile when you moved? I honestly just didn't have room. Yeah, we I didn't, didn't have, have room. room. In the I was not going to rent another truck. To it would have cost more to rent a yeah. truck and haul the food back so there. So we have na our neighbors and our cul-de-sac had helped us for years, like, really helped us out a lot like blew out our sprinklers all kinds of stuff and so we gave a bunch to them because they were always so helpful for us um yeah, i gave mine to my son which you know is like me having it so that that wasn't any problem and here's a tip too if you move if you're using move pain to have moving vans and stuff like that do it for you they said the number one thing people don't get rid of and cost more it, they do it by weight and it causes more weight is books and old magazines. People never want to get rid of those. And they spend a lot of money moving those books mm -hmm. and that. So if you're going to be moving this summer, that's a tip to get rid of that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Sue says our recipe for chicken pot pie is easy and amazing. Thank oh, you. thank you. It is, isn't it? Bonnie, how long will we follow but we refilled bottles of water last a long time. Oh yeah. I mean, if you I put a little tiny bit of bleach, like a couple of drops of bleach in there, it'll last even longer. I don't mess with that step, but I just rotated every six months just to make sure I have fresh water, but pretty much it's not going to hurt you even if it's yeah, a few what, years. Yeah. What's is basically yeah. with the Clorox and they're like that. There's nothing, there's no yeah. germs or anything to be building anything up. Nancy says, I think a generator depends on where you live. Yes, that is very much true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wanda, why wouldn't the fabric softer drain into the tub of a front-loading washer? I don't know. You'd have to just, I don't know, search a YouTube video to see if they yeah. have any suggestions. I don't know. Now, do you ever take the little cup thing out? My, make sure it's clean. Yeah, yeah, make sure it's clean because hot I would, water run hot boiling water through hot it. boiling more water because sometimes it can build up and get clogged in there. So I do that first, you know, and, and Google it and look it up mm -hmm. too. Oh, we forgot about the marriage conference. Should we tell them about the marriage conference, dear? Where I kept my mouth shut. Okay, here's the story. <laughs> Mike's sitting there making faces at okay. her. Okay. <laughs> so first of all. <laughs> <laughs> okay let me see I'll skip. we're still married that's good i'll, I'll skip friday <laughs> saturday <laughs> saturday they're like you know you need to to not look at the problem and look at what the what the feelings are under the problem okay i get that but here's the example they use <laughs> you know for her the lawn mowing was very very important and for him he didn't care if the lawn ever got mowed. But for her, the lawn mowing was super, super important. Well, the feelings underneath that was that she was feeling ashamed that the neighbors were going to think bad of her because her lawn wasn't mowed. And she was feeling unloved because her husband didn't love her enough to be worried about her feelings with the lawnmower being mowed. And he was just like, ah, it's the lawn. I don't care. So they were going through this whole, oh my goodness, it had to be a half an hour spiel on how you need to get into your feelings when the lawn mower, when the lawn isn't getting mowed. Poor Mike, he was sitting over there seeing steam coming out of the top of my head. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, they are making this so ridiculously complicated. Maybe you just need to mow the lawn because the lawn needs to be mowed. <laughs> Maybe we don't need to look at all of our feelings. <laughs> And she was going on about how he never closes the cabinet doors. And so she really found that irritating. But then she realized she still has her husband and how wonderful it is because she didn't lose her husband during that thing going around. And so she's just glad to see that the cabinet doors are open because her husband is here. And I'm like, maybe he should just close the cabinet doors because it's kind. So that when you're walking through the kitchen with a load of laundry, you don't kill yourself running into a cabinet door. <laughs> And poor Mike, he was trying, 
of course, Mike gets into all the touchy feely stuff. I don't, but he gets <laughs> into all the touchy feely stuff. You wouldn't have been able to tell, would you? <laughs> so, he's over there. I love you. I love you, my schnookums. <laughs> You're the best honey ever. You're the best husband ever. Did you bring your mug that you took to the conference in here? Oh, no, it's in the house. I should go get it. So, anyway. Okay, go get your mug while I finish the story and you can't defend yourself. So, <laughs> so, so I'm sitting here thinking, okay, I understand. I, I get the gist of what they're saying. I get that. But don't use these kinds of examples mm -hmm. at a marriage conference for these kinds of things. Maybe you need to just mow the lawn because... The lawn needs to be mowed. Maybe you need to just help your wife with the dishes because she's home with the kids all day long and she's tired and she just needs help because she's on call 24 seven and you're only on call for eight or eight hours or however long it is, or maybe 16 if you do help with the kids a little bit, but a lot of guys just go to work and come home and sit down and say, well, what have you been doing all day long? So maybe you should just do it because you're kind and you love your husband or your wife and you're just being respectful of them. And maybe you should just take the darn tune trash out. So I needless to say, <laughs> I kind of didn't hear anything after that because, because then we had a whole we had a whole list of what feelings we're supposed to go through. <laughs> When we're upset with each other, <laughs> and I'm like, Tari just comes and tells you guys she doesn't have to go to money. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my goodness. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, Jill says, I'm feeling I don't want to pack anymore. <laughs> That's good. That's oh, good. Sharon says she's not so touchy feely either. <laughs> well, I mean, my goodness, use something like, "How about stop interrupting me? I feel like what I'm saying doesn't matter because you're interrupting me all the time." Yeah, see, that would—that's a different. Or point. how about stop sitting on your butt when you come home from work because I feel like I'm the only one doing anything around here and I'm just a doormat and you don't care about me at all because I'm working. 24 hours a day, and you're working eight hours a day. Use those kinds of examples. Don't use mowing the lawn or taking out the trash. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't feel loved when you don't take out the trash. No, I feel like slapping you upside the head because you just don't take the trash out. It's not rocket science. So my whole point of this is when you go to some of these things, take what you can, but... Not all these experts are experts and maybe you need to take it with a grain of salt and stop making it so complicated. <laughs> that's, that's what the big deal is. I Just listen stop to making people it so complicated. like this and they get, it's not a rabbit trail, but they make it so complicated in explaining it and going into all these details that you, they just lose the person, you know, about halfway through. And so you got to keep things more simple and, but you know what? I've I've been finding for everything that everybody's making things more complicated, more confusing, and kind of like chaos. And I was telling Tara this the other day. It's almost, I hate to make everything spiritual, but it's almost like, you know, there's um, a, Satan is doing these things to get people stirred up. You know, it, we look at some of the other things that's happening in the world and think they're horrible, like the wars and all this kind of stuff. But I think that, uh, in a sense, in a where we aren't so observant of, that Satan is causing the confusion, the chaos, and yeah. that type of thing too. So stop giving into the confusion and stop making things yeah. more difficult than they need to be. Yeah, just keep things simple. You know. Um, okay, so here's the little fun part at the marriage conference. So Mike decided to bring his mug. So tell them, tell them what the worship pastor said. Yeah, the wor we walked in and I was holding it there, drinking my coffee. And the worship pastor said, oh, hey, Mike, did you buy that for yourself? <laughs> no, I, I, I actually bought it for him. hilarious, actually. That was pretty funny. <laughs> 
so I thought that was pretty good. So that was the marriage conference. I don't know. Did we say our marriage or not? Here I haven't figured out. I that think yet. we did. Just, just, just barely by the skin of our teeth. Yep. Your version is we saved it. Do you want to know what my version is? No. Okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. So, Carolyn, that's the long version of the marriage well, conference. And I, can I put this, this is more serious. You know, these conferences are good. They, it is good yes. for couples, no matter how long you've been married or if you're just getting married and everything in between. It is good to go to these marriage conferences because you usually glean something from them, you know, to help yeah. every marriage. So does it really say, yeah, I finally made a love show. I just love tuning in while you guys get ready for work. She's ordered her cookbooks for graduation gifts. Thank oh, you good so idea. much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 40% yeah. off right now, guys. We only do this twice a year. So one time in the spring and one time after Christmas, or I mean before. Thanksgiving, before Christmas. That's the only two times that we do that. Usually. Last year we had a special for, I don't remember what the reason was, but usually we only do it two times a year. Nancy, one important thing you've brought up in the past is stock up something to perfect to protect yourself and your family. Yes, Mr. Smith and Mr. Wesson should be a part of your stockpile <laughs> um, room. They should be visiting frequently. Rhonda, getting lots of water tomorrow and non-perishable foods. Yes, mm -hmm. you go, girl. Stephanie, aw shucks, I thought she was going to do a walkthrough of your stockpile. Actually, I am. That's on my list with Sumner to film probably this week, uh, maybe this week. Jay Moore, last credit card gone finally. Yay! Good job. Good job. That was the wood stove. Now the equity loan. You go. You go. You go. She had leaning floors of pizza. Pizza, pizza is scary if they fail. fail. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So, mm. yeah, I totally get that. Um, em Emiko says, I'm happy to order volume one for her birthday. Yay, well, happy birthday. Happy birthday. birthday. Yeah. Joanne, shout out to the mama who turned 65 yesterday. I don't know who that was, but maybe yeah. that's you. I don't know. Oh, Happy yeah. birthday. birthday. <laughs> Mike shouting. Mike shouting. Kimberly says, rotate your stock. Yes. yes. When I put the old in or when I put the new in, I just pull the old forward. Mm -hmm. And Judy says, don't forget to stock for your pets. Yes, but don't stock for your pets before you stock for yourself because pets can eat leftovers. They can eat yeah. mice and stuff like that. So stock for yourself first. And it, that's not bad for them because my vet when my dog was sick, would have me put him on rice with just a little yeah. bit of meat crumbled in. So it's good for the pets yeah. to eat your stuff. Katie says lentils are full of protein too. Yeah. They're pretty mm -hmm. cheap. She's in the UK. So mm, thank you for watching. Yeah. Wow. It's late Yeah. There. UK. Uh, Sleepy had just got our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook. She's so excited oh. to dive in. And let me tell you, all the recipes actually work if you follow the recipe directions exactly. Follow them exactly. If a recipe is not working, you didn't follow the directions. I tested them. I had my low altitude friends test them and they work. So don't substitute anything. And there's been a lot of other people using them. <clears throat> yeah. Since then. If it says use rice flour, don't use almond flour. It, you've got to do that. So you, you're at your own risk if you substitute. <laughs> Sleepy edge, or I mean, Warm Springs, he's hiding her stockpile. Yes, it sounds <laughs> like he is. Um, he, Amico says, my husband hit a roast from me. Oh my goodness. In the window. Oh my goodness. You know, it's a good thing we love those husbands. Isn't Mike, it? <laughs> Mike, my love. Yes. My love. Yes. Thank you for not doing what? I need my roast in the window from me. <laughs> I had it in my stomach. Uh, Jill says she's moving in two and a half weeks, waiting to restock. Yeah, I would yeah. wait two and a half yeah, weeks to restock. Yeah, two and a half weeks, you probably have time. Yeah, that's... Amanda, I'm pregnant with our ninth baby. Woo! Whoa. I'm a little overwhelmed. It's a little overwhelming stockpiling for 12. Yes, but you do imagine. a little every week. Yeah, yes. Just we have do about a little six bit wait, yep, as, as you going. can, as you can. But for 12, you need a stockpile. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Louise, last week I bought 12 bean and cheese burritos at Albertsons for nine cents. Wow. Whoa. That's good. That's good. Marie says, buying your own food insurance. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mary Beth, I keep finding places to stock things, but don't want to lose track of what I stocked first to do the rotation. That is the confusing part. I have to do an inventory. Yeah. What I do is I have two places I put my stuff. And 
the one is uh, by my kitchen and I put all the old, older stuff in there. And then I've got the second place where I put the newer stuff. And then like once a year, depending on how much stuff I have or twice a year, I will do a major rotation then that way. Cause yep. most of my old stuff's getting gone out of the first pantry and it's getting a little bit empty. And once I get that emptied out, then I can shift the other stuff into there. But here's the easiest tip of all, I think like, let's say you're storing stuff all over your house, under the bed, under the couch, in the back of the bathroom sink, whatever, you know, the cabinet stock the same foods there all the time. So like all your green beans go in the back of the bathroom cabinet, all your flour goes under the couch, all your, um, sugar goes under the bed. Then those same foods are always there and you can know when you go to put the new stuff in. Okay, this is the old stuff. I just pull it forward. Don't mix and match foods in different areas in the house. So like the right side of the underneath the couch is all green beans. The left side is all uh, canned fruit. Does that make sense? That way you'll always be able to keep rotating. And also I use the, the cardboard flats uh, boxes. And I stack like three on top of each other. I fill them up with like, say, peaches. And then I put another cardboard box with pears like that. So it's easy just to lift the whole box down and yeah. resort it than to try to sort through stacks yeah. and stacks of Same candies. thing under the couch and bed and that. Yeah. yeah. So it's if you can put them in those little boxes mm -hmm. like that, then it's you can handle yeah. them much better. They're easier to handle. Dana, I didn't know about freezing milk toys, so I started watching y'all. She found some whipping cream on clearance and got it frozen oh, for her tortellini. Good, yeah. Yum. That mm -hmm. sounds really good. Um, okay, next we have, I wish I could get three or four hours of slow rain. Nothing would to flood in Arizona. Yes, Wanda, that would be nice. But mm. it's Arizona, I mean. <laughs> I never understood. My grandparents lived in southeastern Colorado. And they were always praying for rain. But it's southeastern Colorado. It doesn't get any rain. <laughs> so, you know, Diana, in a glass, is a glass container better to store noodles or other items in plastic? Not necessarily. It just kind of depends on where you live. If you have really bad bugs, then I would probably use glass. I like glass, but, you know, like Tara said, it doesn't make a big, too much difference. So Yeah. Jay Moore says, I left the vets in time before the road was like a waterfall with cars falling onto the freeway several oh. years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, that would be bad. Mm -hmm. Trisha Tara, when your kitchen is complete, you will find yourself reorganizing more than before. I have redone three times all of my storage in oh. my kitchen, and I'm still second guessing myself. Okay, dear, did you hear I Patricia what she said? So don't yell at me when the silverware changes places three or four times. I am so glad you said that because I've been going insane at my house since I moved in. And I thought, am I going crazy here? Because I keep shifting and moving things because I can't get the flow to go. So I feel so much better that you made that comment that I'm not the only one doing that. Okay. So, dear, did you hear that? Yes. I did hear that. Yes, you keep rearranging the silverware, and I moved it once in 10 years. <laughs> yeah, you moved it more than once. I did not yes, know. It, was, it was in two places. It's funny because we get used to it being in one drawer, and then all of a sudden it won't be in that drawer. And I will go back to that drawer for like four months looking for it. Try more like four years. I won't do it in the new kitchen that way, though, because all the old drawers are gone. <laughs> You know, I am glad to hear that because I was get I'm getting so frustrated at my house trying to arrange my kitchen and it just keep I keep shifting it and everything. So. Uh, Mike, is my computer plugged in? Um, Patricia says I try to be ready before the hurricane season starts. Not wanting to wait in line. Yeah, mm -hmm. be ready before it yeah. starts. It's not charging. Uh, Lisa, we have good luck with mothballs. Oh, that's a, I've oh, heard that actually. Yeah, yes, Wanda, you might be hurling mothballs along with, <laughs> with your peppermint, peppermint oil. Take it from um, no, it's okay. We'll, we'll make it quick. Um, I have <laughs> 9%. Mom of one, uh, they don't, she says, uh, they don't like Irish spring soap either. So hurl some bars of Irish spring up there. Wanda, when you go, they're going to wonder what you were doing up there. <laughs> Oh, she says they nibbled on her dining on a dime cookbook. <gasps> oh, now that is war. Yeah. Oh my goodness. 
Hello, Hello. Shannon. Hello. Oh, hi, Shannon. I Our emoji, see. Shannon. She loves. Her. I know. I cannot. <laughs> I can't read the words on here, but I can always tell which Shannon. I say that all the time. I know. And but... Annette loves your green blouse. <laughs> oh, thank it you. Shows your green eyes. <laughs> Reverend R.B. Oh, hello. I haven't seen you for a while. I'm requesting a diabetic cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> I know you could look for the recipes. I know a lot of people want it, but that's just, it's just not our market. So we probably won't be doing that. <laughs> Carol, do you have case lot stores uh, sales? Yes, but I don't shop them a lot. I did shop the last one because the prices were actually good this time. But, but I don't you have usually... to check the prices because yeah. they're not always better. Marie says, even with generator, you can't run everything you have to pick. Yep. Send me the next one, Mike. Donna says, if you lose power when winters are bad, just store leftovers in the cooler in the snow. Yes, yeah. we do that all the time. And um, let's see. Tanya says, not the cookbook. Break out the hammer. I'm telling you, this is a hammer. <laughs> hammer time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember hammer time. Oh, Amanda says her husband and kids get so mad when she rearranges the kitchen. <laughs> uh, Jay Weber, what is the best way to store lentils long term? In the original package, you can do oxygen absorbers if you want, but they'll last a really long time. So I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't um, miss. Yeah, I wouldn't have. Especially used if you're all rotating. That. Yeah. About. I wouldn't worry about it. Um, let's see. Lynn says, uh, <laughs> okay hold on wait a minute let me see i'm trying to i've got too many things going on here sorry uh oh okay i thought mike got it through um okay let's see sharon i love tara's face when she's trying not to yeah sorry actually i think our bed is part of my sleeping problem i slept great in the hotel but when i got home and i think it's our um you did sleep good at the hotel. Our mattress thingy. So Mike doesn't know it yet, but we're taking it off again. <laughs> we go back and forth. Change that. Oh, I got mattress. it, Mike. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. We so, change our mattress like every, every six three months. months, six months. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <sighs> Wanda found where the mice are coming in and she stuffed them with steel wool. <laughs> You're on your way, Wanda. Okay, it's going to get better. Oh, give us an update next time we're on. <laughs> Margarita Lisa says, stockpiling now. We live in a Florida tar townhouse. Bought a $49 Coleman camping stove. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's good to have. Very good. Mm -hmm. Jill, loving this. Listening while packing. You go, Jill. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we feel your pain. I was praying for all the U-Hauls I saw on the road going to Colorado. We did talk. Like, you poor Every people. time they went by, we kept saying, oh, you poor people, you poor people. We uh, said that all the time. Lori wants to know, how long does baby formula last? If I don't know. You, I'm sure you can go way further than the expiration date. Oh, yeah. I don't know. There's probably fat in it, so I would say probably not more than a year or 18 months past the expiration, but, but you should be able to. If you've just got one baby, though, you know. You're not going to need it that yeah, long. Yeah, you probably won't need it that long. You, you know, you won't need it that much. Yeah. So be sure to keep in mind that how you're, you're going to be weaning the baby yeah. off of that. Denise wants to know what kind of food do you keep in your car during the summer for the four-mile trek to our house? <laughs> Well, I just keep um, uh, a couple of like um, a canned peaches and I keep tomato soup because I like tomato soup. And oh, I forget what all. I think I keep a can of tuna in there and a can opener. It's not very much. It's only like, but that's a lot for me. You know, that would last me. It's only like three to four days worth is all I keep in there. It's just a couple of canned goods. And be sure you have a can opener. But I would uh, do something easier like granola bars and beef jerky. Well, I do keep that too. I keep those too. And um, I keep just like a little variety in there. I was trying to think. I Oh, I know what I was going to say. And I rotate those out a little more often because since they're in the car, they could get hotter. But here in Wyoming, it doesn't get that hot in my garage. But if I was when I was in Kansas, I would ro rotate it out about every three to six months to keep them, you know, from spoiling. And, 
<laughs> it is the card car trunk stockpile. <laughs> Angie says, I received volume one, guys, 40% off right now, only twice a year. I received volume one today and I'm thrilled. It's worth every penny. I regret not ordering it years ago. I have a digital copy, but it's just not the same as a physical book. Yes. Thank That's you. why it's still in print. And for those of you wondering why our ebooks aren't in print, because we didn't sell as many of those ebooks and we would rather spend the money because we're self-published. So we pay for the printing costs on our books. So we would rather get bigger quantities. Thank you. So that um, we can keep the price lower than print all of our other books. And so um, whether you want to print out the eBooks, I kind of got chewed out by a lady because she printed out the eBook. Um, she's like, well, that's not frugal. Well, you don't have to print it out. So that's your choice to print it out. But um, we would rather order in quantities to keep the price low on our cookbooks. So that's why we have all of the eBooks. Let's see. Aha, my computer's working again. Thank you, my love. You make me feel validated. Uh, you make me feel appreciated. <laughs> you make me feel, I don't know, whatever. You make, you make me feel like, thank you for just keeping the show going. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> Here. <laughs> does that make you feel validated? Yes, it does. I I'm <laughs> valid now. I matter. <laughs> Vicky says she's waiting for her volume two to come in right there. This is the green blue one is volume two. Thank you for ordering. Uh, Carol, do we keep an overstock pantry? Yes, I do. Just Vicky. Uh, the supplement NAC has really helped me with seasonal allergies. Huh? I wonder what that is. Hmm. That's interesting. We've all, our whole family has been having really bad allergy problems. Nancy says she loves the gluten-free, dairy-free French bread in here. Honestly, I didn't remember I put it in there. <laughs> so I'm glad you like it. Uh, Jay Weber. Oh, now that I think about it. Yeah, actually, that one is a really good one. Jay Weber is, is his idea a pulley system to move stuff from upstairs to downstairs. Ooh, that's a good idea. It's not. <laughs> that's a good, a good idea. That's a good idea. I, they have to sand tomorrow, so I can't be working on anything in the kitchen until... So they have to sand. And since we're epoxy, epoxying the countertops, they have to sand. We can't be moving dust around or anything for 48 hours for the epoxy and then another 48 hours, I think, for the top coat. So it'll be Friday or Saturday before I can even start cleaning, really. So then hopefully we can start cleaning next week and then I can start putting stuff back in. But I'm going to film putting everything back in and how I am organizing it and that kind of thing. And so, um, and then I'm going to film Mike's brilliant idea, which is going to take a little bit of doing, it's going to be interesting doing that. But, um, so all that's going to take time to do is what I'm saying. So we're, we're going to go as quick as we can, but, uh, Susan, Jill, I recently turned 73. I think you're seven, 70. How long are you prepping for? Are you prepping to your death? <laughs> I'm 71. I'm going to be 72 in a couple of months. So am I prepping for my death? Huh? Grandma's prepping for her death. Oh, oh my goodness. My goodness. <laughs> she wants to, she wants to be buried in her house coat and she has her house coat laying out on the bed all the time. <laughs> well, I was like, grandma, I know you're 95. I get that. <laughs> but anyway, well, it makes sense because she says she has this phobia about being cold when she's buried, which I totally understand because when my dog James died, the worst, I just sobbed for like two weeks because it was January and it was blizzarding, so cold. Yeah. And I would just stand at the window sobbing because I was afraid, you know what grief can cause you to not think straight. And I was just sobbing because I thought he was going to be so cold out there because he always slept on the electric blanket with me and I just couldn't get control. And my husband stopped by the house one day and I was he couldn't get me calm down, Harley, because I was so worried that James was going to be cold out there. And he finally said, listen, I'm going to take a." And he he was sweet about it. He wasn't laughing at me or anything. He said, I'm going to take a blanket out and lay on top of the grave for you, you know, mm -hmm. because I was just so upset. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not yawning at mom's stories. I did not sleep oh, well no. last night. No. I've been yawning all day. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, mother. Um, 
I don't get offended that easily. <laughs> Frosty gal, how long does box cereal last? So I have eaten cereal two and a half years past the best buy date. So it lasts a really long time. And it'll start going stale. But here's a tip. If, it, if it's like Cheerios or something that's not like excessively sugary, if it's excessively sugary, like Frosted Flakes, this won't work. But if it's like Cheerios, you can toast it in the mm -hmm. oven for a few minutes at 350 degrees. I don't know, five, seven minutes. Just watch it and see when it starts turning brown, take it out. And that'll refresh it also. So, And start using these. If you think things are expiring, think of different ways to use this stuff. For example, if I have a bunch of cereal that's going to expire, like corn checks and rice checks and Cheerios, I'll pop it in the oven no. and mix a, a, a Chex mix no. with it, you know. Uh, my oatmeal, if my oatmeal starts expiring, um, I made a really good uh, cobbler or I guess cobbler or, uh, yeah. Crisp. Co crisp. Granola with, bars is another good one. It, with my, uh, I took a can of peaches and I had blueberry instant uh, oatmeal and I sprinkled that on top in place of the oatmeal with some butter and it was so good with those blueberries and I had some banana I mixed in <clears> one time <throat> you know so start thinking of other recipes other than what you just actually use them for you know uh sorry guys my computer's going nuts here yes I was thinking of you Jennifer as we were driving on 119 waving at you <laughs> Brown eyes. <laughs> I love your impressions. I needed that laugh. <laughs> She's having minor surgery tomorrow. She's so stressed. Don't be stressed oh, out. Yeah. It's minor. You will do good. Yes. You will do well. Mm -hmm. And Goalie, if you're watching this, when's your doctor? <laughs> yes, Goalie. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> um, Havana, uh, during the flooding, our power was out for a week and no water for three weeks. We cooked meat in the freezer on a charcoal grill. It stayed mm -hmm. frozen for about three days. Yeah. Yeah. Lori, does coffee in the bag last longer than a can? No, I would say can would probably last longer, but coffee lasts forever anyway. So I really would. Well, not forever because it has oils in it, but it, it lasts quite a while. Mm -hmm. Stephanie says the adventures of Tar and Jill. <laughs> oh, I forgot tomorrow's Tuesday for the thrift stores, isn't it? Oh, does that mean Man. I have to get up early tomorrow? I don't know. I hadn't <laughs> thought about that. Denise uh, says, oh, no, Tara and Mike, our daughter's in Colorado without us. Yeah, it mm. was it was pretty traumatic, actually. Um, mm. Wanda, uh, are you becoming one with your home yet? Me? I'm trying. I'm trying really hard. I keep telling her I'll come over and paint. She won't listen to me. I'll do it. I told you. Nikki, I'm excited for you guys. I'm glad you finally get to use your kitchen. Yes. <laughs> Although it's probably going to be like two weeks before I can really start using, my, well, maybe three weeks before I can really start using my kitchen. But yes, I'm excited. The thing with my house was when I bought it, um, we looked at it in the summer and the color paint they used on it. Does anybody look at the back page of that book? Shiny. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a lot of people oh. do. Why? I just was wondering. I just saw oh. it. And um, it looked bright and cheery because it had a lot of windows and everything. Well, I found out in the winter, it's a it's called fog green, I think is what the paint color they used on the wall. And it looks really uh, depressing in the winter. It's kind of a, it's not even a gray. It's not really a green. I can't get the greens. Usually greens all match together, but I can't get the greens. So I'm just having trouble with the wall colors. A lot of what I'm having. And I trouble told with. you I would paint. I know it would take us <laughs> two days. I would be done. Okay, farmhouse spread for Lisa right here, page ninety-one. Page ninety-one. This is a stock photo. No, we don't take our own pictures, but this is what it looks like if you bake it in the oven. Okay, and I made the mistake of cleaning out my fridge and forgetting which shelves go with which. Now I can't put it back together. Oh, no, don't feel bad. It's happened to all of us. Sorry. Oh, dear. We shouldn't laugh because I know that's frustrating. Jane, I noticed most people who advise on stacking pantries never mention this item. What about protein powder? Yeah, that's actually a good one. Yeah, protein powder would be a really good one. Uh, Terry, did you order a different window? Yes, we did. It should be here in three weeks now um is it a bay window no it's not that would be nice but it would i should have just gone ahead and gotten a garden window if i was going to all that trouble i guess but and cheryl says thank you for the discounts 40 percent off right now we only do this twice a year it's our mother's day sale we're going through friday for those of you because we were gone so pearl 
Jay Weber, I'm always available in Boulder if your mom and daughter ever need anything. Thank you, Aww. Jennifer. We love I you. Know. You're I know. You're our best Colorado Jennifer viewer Jennifer cracks ever. me up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not on Facebook as, and now that I'm doing the live streams, but yeah. oh, she's funny. Cindy, we're the greatest. Especially love our secondhand shopping videos. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, oh, no, we were trying to decide. Yeah, oh, never mind. Okay. Oh, we should have taken. I wish Tar could have videotaped shopping at the thrift store. Oh, we yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to film you and grandma in the dressing room. <laughs> I had my mom in the dressing room. She was getting a pair of jeans and she'd gotten. She didn't get them. She somebody had given them to her or bought them for her. And. They were skinny jeans. Well, my mom's 95 years old. 95 years old, <laughs> but not skinny <laughs> jeans. And I got her in the dressing room to try another pair of jeans on that we found for her. We couldn't get the jeans off of her. And you should have seen me. And we started laughing, trying to get these silly jeans off of her. Then we finally got them off of her. And we couldn't get them back on her. And I thought, what are we going to do? It was just like, and we were struck. It was like a... A battle in there I didn't want to hurt her you know I'm trying to pull and she's trying to push those jeans off and I thought wouldn't you guys love seeing a video at the thrift store for <laughs> watching my 95 year old mom trying to get her skinny jeans on and off oh my word I thought that would have been a good show <laughs> Allie and Donna says we're hilarious and killing them <laughs> Uh, Colleen, maybe she was concerned about getting a ticket for not mowing. Well, yeah. I mean, that doesn't have anything to do with your feelings. That has to do with the government says you have to mow your yard, you little turd. Get out there and mow it. It's more, see, we think more practical a lot of times. Yikes. <laughs> Good thing I like lawn mowing. Thank you. I never have had to holler about mowing the lawn. Once in a while, I have to ask him only because we've had so much going on, but he's always been like, yeah, it's on my to-do list today. And I'm like, well, Jack's kind of lost in the yard, so we need to. <laughs> what about doing dishes? You have to yell at me about that, right? No, oh, I have to yell at him to do dishes. All Back, you mean? No, actually, you do dishes you almost shower? every single day. Mike does all the morning dishes, and I do all the afternoon and, and getting ready dishes. And... He does a lot of dishes, so thank you. Now, what he I did does more dishes than me. What I did for mowing the yard <laughs> was um, my husband. He would he hated mowing it, and so it would it got pretty tall sometimes. I mean, we're talking pretty tall sometimes. And so one day we drove home from church, and I thought, how can I tactfully tell him I need that yard mowed before it drives me crazy? And we were pulling in the driveway and I said, do you know what? I lost David the other day out in the yard and I almost couldn't find him. So maybe you should try to mow the yard. So it was funny the next day he got the yard mowed. But so you try, you can try some things like that to get them to mow the yard. Susan, where do we store our water? I just store mine in my basements. I've always had basements or well in Kansas, well, I, I had one house without a basement. Where did we store it in Andover, Mike? I think the garage. I was going to say, garage. I do mine in my yeah. garage. Now, if you live in Andover a cold house. climate in the garage, um, I leave the, t um, I don't fill the bottles all the way up. I leave, you know, about a quarter yeah, so of the way down freezes, in case yeah. it freezes. Although I've never had mine freeze, even here in Wyoming, it hasn't, or Kansas. Yeah. Tanya so. says, I feel like slapping you upside the head. Best marriage of life ever. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's the way to do it. <laughs> If I really want your opinion, I stop talking. <laughs> that's pretty good. That is a good I'll one. Remember that? Yeah, one. that's a good one. <laughs> oh, you guys come up with some good ones. That's for sure. Oh, I just had such a hard time keeping my mouth shut during that lawn mowing and getting in touch with our feelings. I got, I got the point they were trying to say, but I'm like, oh my goodness, stop making this more complicated than it needs to be. And let's use our touchy feely things for things that really matter. You know what I mean? But anyway, <laughs> Sarah, she bought $125 worth of groceries for $45. Very wow, good. good. Jim says he got a free piano. That is oh, great. Yeah. Carolyn says she wishes I was your neighbor. <laughs> 
I don't know if you do or not. <laughs> Doodle Tuesday has all of our cookbooks. Thank you. Oh, and yeah, I have thanks. not had a flop with any of the recipes you use. Thank and she you. does follow them. <laughs> she does follow them. <laughs> Listen, I am the substitute queen. I am not kidding. I will, I pretty much every recipe I'm substituting, but I know what I'm doing. I know that when I'm out of butter for the green chili, I can use bacon grease and it will taste really good. But if I put bacon grease in jello, it's not going to taste so good. <laughs> you know what I mean? But when you're first learning to cook, follow the recipe, especially with the gluten free. Cool. Um, well, if you're learn if you're doing a new recipe too, uh, even if you're a good cook and you're doing a new recipe, follow it exactly yeah. so you can know what it's supposed to taste like and be like, and then you'll later on you can you know adapt it. Marie wants to see Jill's stockpiles. We did a video just a few weeks yeah, ago. We Go did. look at that one. Mike, is there any more? Just um, type in Jill's pantry. I think is that what we had it under. Um. Go to our uh, channel. Jill stockpile, I think, is what it was. I'm not totally sure. Um, okay, just it's like small pantry, small pantry stockpiles. Type that in on the search. Excuse me, and you will learn. You will find that. Okay. Just a second, Mike is. Oh shoot. Yeah. <sighs> Gotta love YouTube. Okay. Oh, it's signed me out again. Um, Susan says, I store jugs of water in our unused guest bathtub. That's a really good idea. Put shelving in there. Yeah. Put shelving in there. I know people who, who would do that. Put neat shelving in there, not hoarding shelving. Put neat shelving <laughs> in there. Um, Myla says, my cousin runs a goats on the go business. Lots of farmers and others use him. Okay. What in the world is goats on the go? Hmm. That could be interesting yeah what is goats on the go nikki says feelings <laughs> nothing feelings. yes and your feelings lie your yeah, feelings you need, lie you do need to be careful of feelings because they're all over the place so yeah don't <laughs> natasha do you have issues with family or friends wanting to shop your stockpile rather than shopping for the shelf no i never had that problem my daughter a little bit but i mean not not like, oh, she's coming over to stockpile. Like, she'll be like, oh, mom, do you have such and so? But yeah, not like no. a, not like a shopping, my stockpile. No, and we anything. borrow uh, stuff back and forth, you know, Tara and I do all the time. But it's more, I, I think it would be different if like an extended family member or something was all the time coming over using my stuff and they don't have any of their own. That, that's a different, you know, scenario. Yeah. Becky says when her husband cracked his head enough, he learned to close the cupboard doors. She's 4'11 and locked under. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. Uh, uh, okay, let's see. Rent some goats to mow the lawn. That's a good idea. Yeah, that is. Actually, for we us. We should ask the boys about that if they want to do I that. I haven't thought about keeping goats, but Mike has other ideas on that. Mike doesn't like I the thought of having goats. Not. I don't know why he wouldn't want to have goats. Denise says it's about bills going up unexpectedly. Job hours being cut. Unexpected bills. Yep. Yeah. It's all about that kind of. She no longer worries and she has less stress. Yes. You yeah, will have that's less a stress when point. you're prepared. Mm -hmm. Yes. Lynn says... Uh, or no, Debbie says, Oh, sounds like marriage counseling. My wife moves the utensils too much. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like Lynn's husband is watching. <laughs> Debbie, I was finally able to order volume one and two, anxiously waiting. Yay! Thank oh, you. Yeah. Um, Donna, I get so tired of my husband putting things in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Weber, even the mice love our recipes. Yes. Uh, Barbara, Wyatt Earp could have used you at the shootout at the hockey <laughs> You guys. I just was surprised I hadn't done target practice in, it had been like, I was like 10 years old the last time I did it. So let's see. Was it Grandpa Cooper? Maybe. Probably. Maybe Uncle Randy. I don't know. Grandpa Cooper, Uncle Randy. I mean, it'd be, I was probably 10 years old. And so then when we got the target and I actually hit something, I was totally shocked. <laughs> I just was shocked. Uh, Karen, have you ever, ever added peanut butter to Rice Krispie Treats? I have not, but that would be really good. I've heard that it's really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. 
Katie, anybody know what postage costs for the cookbook to the UK? We don't ship outside the US. I'm really sorry. Guys, I wish we could ship outside the US, but the Canadian laws, the European laws, the UK laws, all of their taxes and custom issues, we were literally losing hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of dollars shipping outside the US. And I just could not do it anymore. I'm super sorry. It's not your fault. It's not my fault. It is the government's fault. You can thank them. We do have the ebooks though that you can get so you can yeah. get the ebooks. Um, Lee says, how do you keep your chocolate safe in your car in the summer? <laughs> <laughs> I eat it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Jeanette says, last week I made the apple bread and the date nut bread from volume one. Yeah, the date nut bread is grandma's. You said she used to make it for Christmas? Oh, she made it every Christmas. That was the only time she made it. And she did it for... That's an old recipe because she was doing it before I was even born. Mm -hmm. So what I said. That recipe probably 70, 70 years old. Yeah, yeah, at least. Jay Weber, the idea of putting all the sorted things by item instead of expiration date is so great. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the way I do it because I don't want to have to sort through. I don't want to have to tag the expiration dates. I don't write on anything. Well, most everything. I'm, I'm going to start writing on my flower just so I can see it easier. But. I don't want to write the expiration date. I don't want to have to be rotating a whole bunch of stuff. So basically what I do is I, I have two rows. If you have space, I don't, I didn't always have space, but right now I have two rows. This side is the beans I'm using. This side is the new beans. When this side is done, then I start restart, or when this side is done, then I restart stocking this side and I use this side. So I just am constantly rotating, but just do it. However, it's easy. Yeah, for that's you. the way I do it in my main closet where I'm storing it is I keep all the like things together, you know, yeah. and then in order. And I have to mark all mine because I don't have my glasses on. I can't see without my, the numbers without my glasses. So mm -hmm. I mark on it because I can't see the numbers yeah. is why I do it. So the, like she says, do what you need to do for you, you know, yep. uh, long-term storage of nuts. Deborah is the freezer is the best way to do yeah, that. Yeah. Freezer. Um, are we going to be doing live shows from the new kitchen? We'll probably do some. Not all, but we'll probably do some. Just Vicky, let the work crew come and paint. <laughs> the problem is mom and I are very particular in our painting. Yeah. She means Jill. Me. Let the work crew, you, come and paint. Oh, I keep telling her she won't listen to me. She's got her kitchen tore up. Now, when's she going to do so this? So what does it have to do to stop your painting? I've just been sitting on my buns doing nothing. Well, see, I've... She thinks it's just going to slap some paint on, but we got to move all the furniture, don't we? Have to it's move. It's not it from the that wall? bad compared to what I've been moving well, in my no, house. But still, I've been on ladders twenty and, feet in the and sky. And we don't do just one room. We're going to have to do the whole house because it just kind of flows. I know, but that'll take color. like three days to do. You don't hardly have anything in your house. You said it would take the, your kitchen a week, and look what happened. I'm doing the painting, not someone else. <laughs> I get in there and get it done. I know. We do. Tara and I paint pretty good and pretty fast. Charlene, my family loves our Extraordinary Meatloaf Volume 2. Yes, that one is very mm. delicious. Um, Sharon says, stand up so they can see the embroidery on your blouse. Oh. Can you see it? Yes. Hold it for just a moment. I love it? those colors on there. I've even got some, huh? <laughs> what? What are you making? I didn't hear what he said. I don't know. I didn't see. I'm not standing. Well, I think you you can see it, I can't you? <laughs> He's just bothering me. Sure. Or Patricia says oatmeal cookies is how we use up oatmeal. Yep. Yes. That's what I do. Shannon makes cereal bars with any cereal. Yes. And our granola bars in here, Dining on a Dime Volume One, is a great way to use leftover cereal. I think for super easy recipes, as soon as we get the our other channel is super easy recipes. And uh, I think I'm going to start doing videos on how to use like 10 uses, uses for leftover cereal, like the granola bars, like in oatmeal cookies, stuff like that, how to refresh them. And so I think I'm when the new kitchen's done, I'm going to start doing some of those. And if you have the book, look in the leftovers uh, index. Six, yeah. Because it'll tell you other recipes to mm -hmm. use for the different things. Pamela, use expired cereal as you would breadcrumbs. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. So if it's a sweet cereal, use it in things like crisps and stuff like that. If it's a savory one, you could use it for casseroles. meat toppings and casseroles. 
Cheryl says she ordered all three books. Thank you for the discounts. You're welcome. Oh, I think I said that already. You. You're welcome. Charlene, I have learned so much from us. And she <laughs> loves her volume one cookbook. Oh, good. Um, Jennifer says it would be so fun if once in a while we all cooked along with you. We could vote on which recipe and then we could get the ingredients and then we could follow along from start to finish. Jennifer, you don't want to do that. You've been watching me long enough <laughs> that you know following along with me. <laughs> You'd have to, drop, have, you you'd have to drop the turkey on the floor <laughs> and try to get it picked up fast enough. And be all over the place. <laughs> Literally all over the place. Uh, let's see. Dee Dee, true confession. I hate doing dishes. Always have my new place has a dishwasher and use it regularly. So here's what's funny. I actually hate unloading the dishwasher. I would rather hand wash dishes as I go and put them up than use the dishwasher. If I didn't have Mike and the kids, I wouldn't use the dishwasher. Isn't that funny how different people do? I hate do. unloading the dishwasher. My husband, he would, um, he hated doing the dishes, but he would clear the table and rinse the dishes off, almost like you were washing them and stacking them, stack them perfectly there by the sink for me to wash them. So yeah. different people like, you know, different things. Sandy says her husband cooked dinner and she heard the dishwasher start. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wanda says rent some goats to mow the lawn. And then Myla's, so this is Myla's response when I read it and I had no idea what it meant. Her cousin runs a goats on the go business. Lots of farmers use him for mowing. Oh, That's actually a really good it idea. It is a good idea. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. That's a pretty, I think that might be my next mm -hmm. business. Care, oh, oh, dear. Dear, are you on here? Let's see. Are you on here? Karen says I should be a marriage counselor. <laughs> what you God, God help us all. <laughs> God help us all. <laughs> what? <laughs> What do you mean? Let's see. Mosaic says her questions keep disappearing. So, hmm. I don't know. Did did you find questions from Mosaic? I don't know why they're disappearing. No, I just answered her that. I don't know if you have questions. I just answered her that. Because um, over 200 characters, it might just. Oh, yeah. If it's over 200 characters, you, it only limits it to 200 to characters uh J jennifer says give out discount cards for my stockpile <laughs> <laughs> there you go oh my goodness that would be funny okay ellie <laughs> okay um and let me see <laughs> i can call, call my marriage counseling and get it together people <laughs> did you hear that mike <laughs> <laughs> suck it up suck it up marriage counseling <laughs> suck it up, marriage. i've got news for you marriage counseling <laughs> don't be stupid marriage counseling <laughs> just do the dishes marriage counseling <laughs> actually okay never mind people might be watching this so i better not say anymore <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if we all had a meetup together, all of our viewers and us? I mean, we're doing this just over the internet. How what how funny it would be. Yeah. It was fun when we went and saw Goalie and, and Kimmy and everything. Yeah. We just about died laughing. So huh. Mike said some people's question are disappearing. I don't know why, because we're not deleting. There's no trolls at the moment, so I don't uh -oh, know why. We're not but... Deleting. Sander goats will eat anything metal, plastic. Man, they're like grasshoppers. <laughs> they are like grasshoppers. Becky, I've been loving my dairy-free recipes in the green book right here. I've been enjoying the abundance. been making oat frappuccinos, chocolate milk, and not mm. feeling guilty for spending $2 a gallon. You go. That Very great. good. Yeah, I've been buying gluten-free bread, and I'm about to have a cow because I'm like, and my oven got in this weekend, so I have my oven again. Angie, when I first moved out on my own, my mom would buy oil, olive oil in bulk, and I would come by with my glass bottle. Yep. <laughs> yeah, my kids never really did that. BJ did the laundry at our house, but they never really did too much. <laughs> Jennifer, I hate mowing the lawn in Kansas. Yeah. Oh. She says once or twice a year in Wyoming. Actually, what's funny is in the spring, so we've only been on this property two years, but last year someone had to mow every single day. 
we were having to mow every single day because it was growing so fast in the spring that we were mowing a section, not the whole property. We were mowing a section of our property. It's really hilly. So it's super hard to mow. So we would do like 20 minutes or 30 minutes at a time. Each person would take 20 or 30 minutes at a time. And so for like three weeks, we had to mow every day. But then in the summer, it was just like every 10 days. So it was really nice. But um, yeah, Shannon says her mom and dad just celebrated their 50th anniversary. She's busting up listening to you guys. <laughs> well, happy anniversary. Yes. If we make it to 50, we'll let you know. <laughs> Mike's starting to question it. <laughs> I don't know if Mike's going to ever go to another marriage counselor can, uh, conference with me <laughs> at all. He'll put a muzzle on you before you leave. Hey, I kept my mouth shut in the movies. Yeah, I'm bad at the movies. Poor Mike. The first time we went to go see, uh, well, who's the dude, Bond? It was Mission Impossible with Mission Tom Cruise. Oh, we went to go see Mission Impossible. <laughs> Wait till you hear this, guys. <laughs> so go ahead, dear. You tell the story. Yeah, there's a big adventure scene where, uh, you know, it's an action movie. There's a big adventure scene with the helicopter flying over a train, and the train goes into a tunnel, and I think somehow the helicopter gets sucked into the tunnel, and there's this whole action thing, and, and the theater tar just says, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> But she's done that a number of times at movies or other kinds of things like that. <laughs> just like, but if it's but if it's a uh, if it's a girl, uh, what a chick flick like at Christmas, oh. <laughs> <laughs> or like Titanic. What? She's just gonna leave him there to die? She's not gonna let him <laughs> up on the trunk? With her. <laughs> I love you too, dear. See you later. <laughs> Have a nice float to the bottom. <laughs> Tara has trouble with suspension of disbelief. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to be so sick when we're done tonight. Amanda, um, we've thought about getting chickens for many reasons. Our twins love them, especially our one with autism. Is it worth the price of feed? No, it's not. You're not going to save money raising chickens. Now, no. if your autistic son needs it or, or whoever, let's see, tw or twin, if the, if the autistic son needs it and it would be like good therapy type thing, then I would say go yeah. for it. But you're not going to save money buying feed versus buying the um, eggs, eggs at the grocery store. Even when eggs were, what were they, $9 a dozen or whatever a few months ago, it still was not worth the cost of having chickens. And I have a gal here that brings me eggs all the time. Hi, Kim. Mm -hmm. And um, she's even said, yeah, she said, I don't know if it's worth keeping the chickens because it's costing so much to keep the chickens. And it was such a pain this winter because our chickens kept getting buried in the snow. So Yeah, I was going to say, and that taking care of them can get kind of yeah be a headache. Faye, do I have to use Mylar bags for long-term storage? No, you do not. Rice and beans will keep without Mylar bags. I would not waste Mylar bags on rice and beans. What mm. I would do is use them on things like flour. If you really want to keep flour five years, go ahead. I personally don't do that. I just keep rotating my flour out. And Amy says we should tape doing painting your house. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Uh, Karen says, I own a senior care home. I would suggest sweatpants or stretchy pants. Yes, mm. I know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Mom does too now. <laughs> uh. <sighs> Paula says, No, Mike, Tara is just a tell it like it is gal. There you go. Tell it like it is therapy and guilt. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, my goodness. I haven't had sleep for a while. <laughs> Hey, it's still not as bad as last week's ad campaign. I'm just saying. Last week's, last week's ad campaign. Um, it's so nice to hear. Oh, what? It's so nice to hear or to watch a YouTube channel and laugh. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. You're full of hilarious comebacks today, Nancy said. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> You guys are, you guys crack us up too. It's, you come up with some good things. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Yes. Jennifer actually had a meetup with us. We love Jennifer. Yeah, we did get to meet Jennifer. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was fun. Um, 
Paula says, too many people need their sensitive side counseled instead of their common sense side. Oh, my goodness. Could you see me as a counselor? Oh, my goodness. I would just be, it would all I could do to keep a straight face. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm sorry. Your husband's watching porn? Pull the plug. <laughs> sorry, dude. Your phone's gone. Your computer's gone. If you're staying with me, you ain't doing that kind of baloney. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> then I slap you upside the head. <laughs> but, okay. I'm having a moment. <laughs> Stop picking these men in the first place. Thankfully, I picked a man that does not do this kind of stuff. Now, you better not prove me wrong in a few while. <laughs> but... He has that total access to my computer and phone, and I have total access to his computer and phone, and I know that he won't do anything. Why? Because when I married him, that's the kind of guy he was. I have a friend that her husband literally pinned her up against the wall in a rage, literally minutes before walking down the aisle, and she still did it. I know. And then you wonder why you're in an abusive relationship. I'm not condoning abuse and I'm not saying that it's right for men to do that. But women, you have a responsibility to pick a man who's not going to do that baloney. And then if your man is doing that baloney, it's your responsibility to say, heck no, you're not going to do that around me, period. Take the kids and leave until you can work out your problems. Sorry, but... You know, I, I, I've like, I have not had one friend. I don't know what it is with me. <laughs> I know. You, you, you. <laughs> not one. Well, one here, but before we moved here, I have not had one friend that wasn't in an abusive relationship of some sort, physical, emotional, all the other stuff. And, and I felt bad for them, but they were just as much of the problem by letting it continue to happen. And so, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, but mm. women, a lot of times you are just as much at fault for letting this stuff continue to happen over and over to you. And I get it. You get torn down, you get worn out, but at what point are you going to stand up for yourself and say, no, I'm not taking this anymore. I'm going to go live in my car if I have to, but I ain't putting up with this. Well, I, part of what Tara is saying is just think, use common sense on some of this stuff. Like we, we got a question from a gal that said, um, my son who was like nine or 10 stays up till three or four in the morning on his phone at night doing stuff on his phone, you know, not doing anything bad necessarily, but he stayed up all night long and was too tired the next day to go to school on his phone. And she said, I don't know how to fix this problem. It's so simple. Take the phone away from him. You know, some of these things you have. This is to, not rocket science, people. I don't know. I don't know. Parents are so afraid they're going to offend their children. It doesn't work that way. It's your responsibility to protect them and keep them safe and, if they're not getting enough sleep, you do whatever it takes to help them get that sleep, you know, type of thing. So just think things through. And well, and like to today, I was watching in, when I was taking a break, I sat down and watched uh, this counselor dude. And the woman was like, well, my boyfriend has a secret identity. She's like, well, I've gone out with this guy eight or nine times and we really connect or something like that. I can't remember the exact way, but it was like, oh, I'm emotionally invested type thing. And well, I discovered that he's married with kids and, and that's not his, the name that he told me isn't the name that he, that's not his real name. And he says he's separating from his wife and leaving. And I just don't know what to do. Woman, this is a no brainer. You don't. And she went on a couple of dates after she found this out. <laughs> Sorry, Chicky. I have no sympathy for you. This is a black and white situation. 95% of the situations are black and white situations in those kinds of things. And you just need to open your eyeballs 
and do something about it. You know, people really get variety when they watch us, don't they? Oh, have mercy. <laughs> You get your money's worth when you watch us. If you want a soap opera or uh, what counseling, or if you want comedy, you can just join us or cooking. Well, seriously, it's I not even he's married with yeah. kids and you're questioning it. Yeah, that's it. You know, people anymore. I don't know. If people are just so insecure or what it is. Or but, like my one friend, her husband shoved her up against the wall on their wedding day, getting ready to go down the aisle. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. I would walk down that aisle and say, folks, he just choked me before the wedding. His butt is out of here. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I'm i sorry. I have the warrior gene. I had a genetic test. If you couldn't tell, I have the warrior <laughs> gene. But some of this is just common sense. And you need to stop making excuses and start taking action. It really is. And so anyway, let me answer Natalie's storage. What do you do for water storage? So we talked a whole bunch about that earlier in the show. Fill, we fill just soda bottles that we use for parties or juice or tea bottles, or you can um, get five, ga I get five gallon ones at garage sales all the time for a dollar. I just use anything that I can store water, storm in my basement. And then I just rotate out the water every six months to a year. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. Um, rotate them out. We yeah. water our plants outside or use them for different things in the house during throughout the year. Yep. Faces. Okay. Her father raised her to pay with cash and never have a credit card. She owns her first home, bought and paid for at the age of, excuse me, 28. And she's been debt free ever since. Holy wow. Holy. Very good. That's great. Yeah, that's good. That's really, really good. Um, <clears throat> all right, guys, our cookbooks are 40% off right now for our Mother's Day sale. It only happens twice a year. Volume one is the red one. Volume two is the blue one. They go together, but they're totally different recipes. And then our gluten-free right there, dairy-free edition. We are not going to be live tomorrow, but we are going to be live on Wednesday. Please visit us at livingonadime.com, and we will see you guys next time. Love you guys. Bye-bye.